Stay tuned all the way through this video. It is packed full of great clips for you guys that want to learn how to catch flatheads. Hello, my name is Rod Bates and I'm the owner of Cornelia Guide Service here in central Pennsylvania. Tonight Jared and I are going to take you out on the Susquehanna River and we're going to introduce you to some tips and tactics that we use to catch flatheads and channel cats uh, here in the Susquehanna River. The current river stage is about five foot above normal. It's muddy. Uh, eventually Jared can pan around here and show you how muddy it is. And in June, July, and August, typically that's nighttime fishing for flatheads. But because we have mud, a little bit of overcast, I think we can get them in the day. Gets better video for you. So we'll try to give you some tips here. We're looking forward to the Lord to bless us with some fish tonight. Okay, um, the gear we're using tonight, this is the 7'6 Team Catfish Thundercat rod. It's a one-piece rod. It has uh, a lot of backbone to it and sensitivity as well. And then the reels we're using, these are the Team Catfish Gold Ring 400 Series reels. Okay, now what we're going to talk about is our line. Uh, we're using the Team Catfish Tug of War 65 pound braid in a high vis yellow. The next thing is your sinker slide. Now the Team Catfish sinker slide has an extra wide gap here, which makes it real nice because a lot of times you might be fishing a disc sinker and any keeper will work. However, there's other times when you have a bigger sinker, like a four ounce here, and you need an extra wide hook on that, and that works well. So we got our sinker slide up our, our braid. Then in order to protect our knot where our swivel is, we have a Team Catfish sinker bumper, okay? So what that does is when that you cast out and that thing's banging, it's protecting your knot. Then we have a 50 pound weighted swivel, and then to the swivel, I've got 80 pound Dacron leader uh, on a snelled hook. This is a 7 hot J hook, which works out very well. Okay, I would say one of our biggest headaches when fishing for flatheads, we have to have live bait. So you got to catch your bait, then you got to keep it alive. Uh, some people use aquariums, some people have containers in a pond, a cage. I use a cooler system, I have several coolers. I can keep up to 50 baits in a larger cooler than this, but I need to change my water twice a day and I can keep those baits for up to two weeks. Uh, I just have a small battery pack here to bring out on the boat. I have a smaller cooler, probably 20 some uh, sunfish in there right now. And uh, you, you got the power bubbles. Uh, they work fantastic, and that's how we keep our bait alive uh, when we're out on the trip. Okay, what we're going to do is show you how we rig our, our sunfish now. Basically what I do is come up behind the dorsal fin, down about three quarters of an inch, poke through there, bring it out the other side. Now one thing you got to do is you always got to check your hook, because sometimes you'll have a scale on there like that. You got to make sure there's no scales on that hook. That's how we do it. We didn't even have all six rods out and one went uh, let's see if it's a flatty or a channel. Flatty. That's a flatty. Thank you Lord. Look at that. 65 pound braid just wing him right in there. No issues. Beautiful. Nice. Alright Jared's got him hooked up on her team catfish grippers. Those things are phenomenal. We they use them are. on everything. Bass, walleye, musky, toothy critters, channel cats, flatheads. Uh, they work out very well. Uh, we might have another one going here. Okay, we just made a slight move here, and uh, I don't know, five minutes, Jared's hooked up. Why don't you take that clicker off? Okay. <laughs> you might as well lift him in. Whoa! Yeah, you better start lifting them in. <laughs> okay, what we do is we mark our fish so we know if we caught them before. It's kind of neat to track them that way. All right, thank you, Lord. I don't even have the other rod in the water. I was just baiting it up and Jared's hooked up, got another one coming in here. A little flatty. Just mark him and then send him back out too. Here on the Susquehanna River, we fish a lot of rocky water. So if we don't anchor the back of our boat and the bow of the boat, then uh, we get swing. When you drag these baits across, you get hung up a lot. So that's why we fish two anchors. You got one on there? All right, I was checking a line and Jared hooked up over here. Yep, another flatty.
Look how orange he is. Very interesting. But again, no mark on the dorsal, so we didn't catch him before. Okay, as you can see, I got some jugs here in the boat. What that's for is when we go to another location, we don't lose our bait. We just put him in there, he'll stay alive till we get to the next point where we're gonna anchor. Put it in the rod holder and we're good to go. Okay, this rod was getting bit. Looks like it still is. This rod was getting bit, and that rod went while Jared and I were holding the other two. Ooh! <laughs> Look at that Thundercat handle that 10 pound fish. Piece of cake. Eh, maybe he's not 10 pounds. Alright, we were scouting around, uh, had a high river today, muddy, we found a few fish, basically pull up to a spot, you do one or two and you had to move on, so fish are, were hard to, they weren't munched up today like we thought with the muddy water, but uh, I used the uh, Thundercat poles today, and a Team Catfish Reel, they performed excellent, just uh, handling the fish, just felt tight, there wasn't no roly poly in your hand, so. It was great to try them and look forward to uh, a lot more fish catching with the uh, Thundercat poles. If you have any questions about anything that we showed on this video today, just email Rod Bates at Quinania Guide Service and we'll be glad to answer any questions you might have.